हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर मनीष भंडारी फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग जे एन एंड गैस यूनिवर्सिटी जोधपुर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस जर्नल बियरिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड लुब्रिकेशन इट इज अ मेथड टू रिड्यूस फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन टू रबिंग सर्फेसेज यूजिंग अ सब्सटांस कॉल्ड लुब्रिकेंट द लुब्रिकेंट्स माइट बी लिक्विड लुब्रिकेंट्स सेमी सॉलिड लुब्रिकेंट्स एंड सॉलिड लुब्रिकेंट्स द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ लुब्रिकेशन प्रोसेस आर टू रिड्यूस फ्रिक्शन टू रिड्यूस वियर to carry away heat generated due to friction and to protect the journal and bearing from corrosion there are two types of modes of lubrication which are thin film and thick film lubrication in thin film lubrication there is metal to metal contact such as door hinges machine tool slides etc in thick film lubrication the thickness of the oil film is maintained in such a way that the metal to metal contact is completely avoided there are two types of thick film lubrication one is hydrodynamic and the other one is hydrostatic in hydrodynamic lubrication load supporting fluid film is created by relative motion of sliding surfaces while in hydrostatic load supporting fluid film is created by an external source like a pump which supplies fluid and maintain a certain pressure zero film lubrication is also defined where there is no lubricant now let us understand journal bearing it is a sliding contact bearing it works on hydrodynamic lubrication in which entire load of the shaft is carried by a film of fluid present between the rotating and non rotating elements the rotating element is actually the shaft which is called journal the portion of shaft inside the bearing is called journal and hence the name journal bearing it supports the load in radial directions and depending on the angle of contact of bushing with the journal the bearing is called full journal bearing or partial journal bearing we can understand the difference between the full journal bearing and partial journal bearing by looking at figure number 1a and figure number 1b in full journal bearing the angle of contact of the bushing with the journal is 360 degree these bearings can take load in all the radial directions in partial journal bearings the angle of contacts between the bush and the journal is less than 180 degree and mostly it is 120 degree partial bearing takes load in only one radial direction now let us understand the operation of journal bearing it can be understood with the help of the figure number 2 where we have drawn three types of position of the journal bearing the figure number 2a shows journal is at the rest figure number 2b shows journal starts to rotate and figure number 2c shows when journal has attained higher speed when the journal is at rest due to the bearing load w the journal is in contact with the bush and the lowermost position and there is no oil film between the bush and the journal when journal starts to rotate it climbs up to the surface of the bearing with load and lower speed there is a tendency of the journal to shift to its sides at the equilibrium position frictional force balances the component of bearing load normally at this condition either a metal to metal contact or an almost negligible oil film thickness will prevail as the speed increases it forces the fluid into wedge shaped region the equilibrium position shifts and a continuous oil film is created this continuous fluid film has a converging zone known as wedge which makes the fluid film capable of carrying huge load since more and more fluid is forced to enter into the wedge shaped region pressure is generated within the system and this type of bearing is called self acting bearing the pressure distribution is shown in figure number 3 as we have discussed the operation of journal bearing at the lower speed there is a very thin film of lubrication between the journal and the bearing and as the speed increases more and more fluid is forced in the space of the journal and the bearing that is called the thick film lubrication it is shown in the curve figure number 4 this curve is drawn by mackey brothers experimentally and it defines the stability of the hydrodynamic journal bearing we can see that this curve is between the coefficient of friction and bearing characteristic number bearing characteristic number is mu and divided by p where mu is absolute viscosity of lubricating oil n is speed of the journal and p is the unit bearing pressure unit bearing pressure is calculated by dividing the load with projected area of the bearing that is w divided by dl where d is the diameter of the journal and l is the length of the journal bearing characteristic number corresponding to the minimum friction is known as bearing modulus 
we can see by looking at the curve that there is two reasons one is AB and the other one is CD AB is called the boundary lubrication or thin film lubrication while the CD is called the thick film lubrication reason bearing characteristic number is maintained in such a way that the bearing operates in hydrodynamic reason or thick film lubrication so that bearing does not shift into boundary lubrication or thin film reason and there is no possibility of metal to metal contact in reason CD due to friction heat is generated and hence temperature increases thereby viscosity decreases in bearing characteristic number will reduce and operating point shifts to point C thereby reducing friction and temperature which in turn increases viscosity it brings back to original operating point that is why when the bearing is operated in the region of CD the bearing is working in the condition of self-acting it definitely comes back to its original position but it remains in the stable boundary conditions and that is why we always wish that the bearing operates in the region CD to maintain the stability of the lubrication film. Here are the some of the bearing materials and properties of the bearing materials are listed. Bearing materials are lead based babbits, tin based babbits, phosphorus bronze, gun metals etc. And the desirable properties of the bearing materials are the bearing material should not stick the journal surface. It should have high compressive strength. It should have high endurance strength since there are chances of fluctuating load and fatigue loading in the bearings. It should have the property of conformability and embeddability. It should have the property of corrosion resistance. The first design method is given by MD Hersey. This method is based on the dimensional analysis. The first step is input parameters the input parameters are taken from the operating conditions in which application is given bearing load journal diameter and journal speed are taken the second step is selection of design parameters for the step we have to refer design data handbook from which we select lubricant it is based on the application of the lubrication and correspondingly viscosity data can be taken from the data handbook Second important data is limiting bearing pressure. It is also taken from the data handbook. The third step is we have to find out the L by D ratio where L is the length of the journal bearing and D is the ratio, diameter of the journal. If L by D is greater than 1, it is termed as long bearing. If L by D is less than 1, it is termed as short bearing. When L equals to D, that is length of the bearing equals to the diameter of the journal, it is termed as square bearing. The longer the bearing, the more difficult it is to get sufficient oil flow between the journal and the bearing. Therefore, the design trend is to use L by D ratio as 1 or less than 1. The next step is to check for bearing pressure. For the purpose, we have to calculate the operating bearing pressure. The operating bearing pressure is calculated as W by LD and this bearing pressure should be less than the bearing pressure which we have already taken from the step number two the next step is to check for the stability in the hydrodynamic lubrication as we have discussed in the friction curve that the bearing should operate in the thick film region or hydrodynamic lubrication region and for the purpose we have to select the bearing characteristic number from the data handbook which is given as minimum bearing characteristic number then we have to calculate the operating bearing characteristic number this bearing characteristic number should be greater than the minimum required bearing characteristic number so that the bearing operates in the stable region. The next very important step is to check for thermal equilibrium. Since there is friction in the bearing thereby definitely there is generation of heat and for longer life of the bearing the heat generated should be dissipated properly. So we have to calculate heat generation and heat dissipation capacity. Heat generated is equals to F into W into V where F is the coefficient of friction, W is the load and V is the rubbing velocity. The coefficient of friction is obtained by Mackey's equation and the Mackey's equation can be referred from the data handbook. Heat dissipation capacity is calculated as Ka Tb minus Ta where A is the projected bearing area, K is the heat dissipation coefficient Tb is the bearing surface temperature and Ta is the temperature of the surroundings. And for the ideal conditions, 
heat dissipation capacity should be more than the heat generated so that whatever heat is generated because of the friction it is dissipated and there is no remaining heat in the bearing. Otherwise heat dissipation capacity should be greater than heat generated. If not, selected parameters are reiterated or artificial cooling is provided. The second method is given by Remondi and Boyd. It is based on hydrodynamic theory and expressed in dimensionless parameters. The first step is selection of parameters in which two types of parameters are selected. First one is from operating conditions like application, bearing load, journal diameter and journal speed. Some of the parameters are taken or selected from data handbook such as proper lubricant which is suitable to the existing condition and the viscosity of the oil. Then the L by D ratio and bearing pressure are also taken. C by D ratio where C is radial clearance. All these data are taken from the design data handbook. The next step is to calculate the Sommerfeld number. Sommerfeld number is S equals to R by C whole square mu n by P where R is the radius of the journal and is the journal speed in revolution per second. Sommerfeld number has all the parameters which are controlled by the designer. That is why this number proves very much importance in the design of journal bearing. Sommerfeld number is related with all the dimensionless performance parameters which we are going to discuss in the next step. Dimensionless performance parameters. Various charts have been prepared for various dimensionless performance parameters with respect to Sommerfeld number. Charts and tables are available in design data handbook. These dimensionless performance parameters are minimum oil film thickness variable that is HO by C where HO is minimum oil film thickness. Flow variable that is Q by RC and L where Q is flow of lubricant, L is length of the bearing, N is the journal speed. Coefficient of friction variable RF by C where F is the coefficient of friction. Flow ratio where QS is the slide leakage. Maximum film pressure ratio that is P maximum is the maximum pressure developed in the film. Design parameters such as HO, Q, F, QS and P maximum are calculated from the dimensionless performance parameters. These parameters are taken from the charts or tables from the design data handbook with the help of the Sommerfeld number. The next important parameter is temperature of the lubricating oil. It is a very important point because lubricating oil is maintained at a certain temperature. So we have to find out the temperature of the lubricating oil. It is found out as heat generated we have to calculate as FWR 2 pi n and the heat carried away by the oil flow equals to mc delta t where m is mass of lubricating oil passing through the bearing c is specific heat of oil delta t is the temperature rise mass of oil m is given by rho q times 10 raised to minus 6 kg per second where q is the lubricating oil flow and rho is the density of the oil assuming the heat generated is taken away by the oil the temperature rise can be determined. When we put heat generated and heat carried away by the oil flow equal, we can calculate the temperature rise that is delta T. The average temperature rise of the lubricating oil is given by T average equals to Ti plus delta T by 2 where Ti is the ambient air temperature. Viscosity corresponding to the T average is found out from the design data handbook and the lubricating oil is selected correspondingly. I hope you have gone through the design procedure of journal bearing and by doing a number of examples you will be able to understand the procedure. Thank you. I wish you keep improving.